Hi guys, it's your girl Albany back at it again with another video. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how I achieved my faux goddess locks. So I won't bore you because I know y'all didn't come here just to see me. So we can jump right into the video. Okay, so besides the hair, these are the three things you'll be needing to achieve this look. When crocheting, I don't think it matters if you go through the front or the back. As long as you're comfortable and you can see, you're good. You're going to slide your crochet needle all the way through your plait. Plait is the section that you've parted out and braided, basically. I'm going to take my curly hair and divide it into two so that we can have more hair. This is the Cuban Twist Hair, 16 inches in the color 1B. I am going to brush out the ends of this hair because I found it easier to wrap and like it it makes the hair a little longer. I started off by wrapping the hair around twice and that was enough for it to look like it was actually growing out of my scalp. I did leave a piece of curly hair out. So I didn't wrap all of the curly hair so that it can give that goddess fly away curly look. And then I continued to wrap down the, the braid. So in this clip, I had to call in reinforcements because my arms were left for dead and I could not, I couldn't even see like my kitchen because it was too much hair going on. But in this clip, my aunt is going to show how it looks when your curly hair is already braided into your plait and by showing that you can start off without having to crochet. You can just start by wrapping. She's going to wrap three times and then she's going to go down my lock. Okay, so the simplest way to explain this is after you're done wrapping at your root, you're going to have two sides. One side is your base and the other side is your wrap. Your base is going to consist of the braid slash curly hair slash a little piece of the Cuban twist hair just so you can add a little thickness as you're wrapping so that your lock is not skimpy looking like thin looking. The side of your base never moves. It never moves. If it does move, that means you're now two strand twisting and you're not going to realize it until at the end of your lock and it, and you think that you're done and it starts to literally unravel like a twist wheel. So do not move your base hand. Your base hand is literally just to hold in place as you're wrapping, as your other hand is wrapping around your faux lock. The job of your wrap hand is to literally make sure that you're overlapping so that there are no gaps and that it's long enough to be the length that you want it to be, which you already dictate before you even start wrapping. And you're gonna wrap, and you're gonna wrap, and you're gonna wrap, 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 so you can't wrap no more. With 613 blonde hair, you have to seal it with nail glue because burning it will just turn it brownish black. Okay, so in my base, it's the curly hair, my real hair, and a piece of the Cuban twist hair. And my wraparound piece is way longer than the Cuban twist piece that's in my base. If you're still confused on as to how much hair to leave on either side, whether it's your base or your wraparound, the thing that I like to to just keep in mind is what however long your wrap is, divide that in half because with you overlapping, it's basically like going over it again. So that's using twice as much hair, meaning you're not covering any ground on your lock. So to be on the safe side, just make sure that your wrap around here is extremely long. 
So I'm going to slow it down for you and be a little more dramatic just so you can see what I mean when I say bass and wraparound hand. So as you can see, my bass does not move. Like my top two fingers, yeah, to make sure that we're overlapping and that there's no gap. And to, to make sure that your lock is the same width all the way down. Because you don't want a thick in the top lock and then a skimpy at the bottom lock. That's not a look. Your wraparound hair can be however long you want it to be. Because your base, even though it looks like it's not moving. I mean, it's not. But your base is able to like stretch out as you're dragging it down in order to wrap around it <laughs> if that makes sense like it doesn't matter if your base hair was literally an inch you can stretch that one inch into like four inches so that's why it doesn't matter how short the other side is i hope that makes sense as you're wrapping if you see any gaps in your faux lock you can always like squinch it and tease the hair like up and down to like feel the gap that creates a messier look, or you can simply unravel what you've already wrapped and rewrap it. I started to run out of wrap hair, so I had to like brush out the end to turn that one inch into three inches, honey. Like, <laughs> I had to make it stretch. We had to make it work. In the event that you do run out of wrap around hair, and your base has still Cuban twist hair in it, you can always cut what's in the base and just seal it where your wraparound hair ends, just to be safe. And then I'm gonna light my ends. I literally let my hair catch on fire, honestly. Just so I, until I can see like all of them singed together, that's when I stop. And honey, this hair is the stiffest, stiff wear, yeah, it's stiff. Whew. All right, I'm going to show you again what goes in your base. This is when you crochet it. You've crocheted your curly hair, you've crocheted the Cuban twist hair, and you got your real hair. That all goes into your base. I'm trying to determine how much Cuban twist hair I want on my base side and how long I want my wraparound side. And then you just go for it. When you go, when you're in the back of your head, it's kind of hard to start off. It just takes a little longer because, like, you can't really see. But you surely can feel, honey. And I'm going to wrap around twice and I'm going to go for it. You're tightly holding onto your base, but those two, your your index and your thumb, I hope everybody got index and thumbs because you're going to need them, honey, because they're going to definitely be your guide as to helping you out through this whole process. Like, if you don't got any other fingers on your hand, I don't know what to tell you. Like, just go ahead and get the pre-crocheted pack of goddess locks and just insert them <laughs> with the crochet hook because there's just no way you're going to survive. In order to get the flyaway curly hair look, you simply take a piece of curly hair, however much you want out of your base and you continue to wrap what's left in your base. All right, so we, I'm gonna break it down even more and even slower just in case my hands were in the way of the other shot and you just could not fathom how I got it to look like this. So um, here I am again, 
showing you how the base is not supposed to move, just your wrap around. I mean, your guidance fingers move too, but you know, that's just to hold your place to make sure that you're overlapping. This was crocheted in, by the way, because I didn't, I didn't show the crochet part, but I did crochet it into my plait. And in this clip, you can see how the wrap around here is extremely way longer than the base here. However much curly hair is in your base, it does not matter because you can always, you know, cut at the end. You can cut your curly hair to be the same length as your whole entire head. So the curly hair is more so just decoration. It's just filler pieces. After finishing this look, I can honestly say for me, being a person that's not really into doing my own hair, it was easier to start off with the with your plait already including the curly hair. So if you can get someone to braid in your curly hair into your plait, that will save you a lot of time and energy versus trying to crochet the curly hair and the Cuban twist hair. Because at least when your curly hair is braided into your plait, you have the option between crocheting your Cuban twist hair into the lock and starting off or just simply starting off by just wrapping when it was all said and done, I used four packs of the Cuban Twist Double Strand Style, 16 inches in the color 1B. And then for my curly hair, I used the Free Trust Braid in the Cozy Deep 20 inches in the color TP1B-30. And I used two packs of that. When I was done with all my faux locks, I went back through and I brushed the ends of each faux lock and I added these blue curling rods and I dipped my whole head into hot water, well, a side at a time. And that really helped with the the locks not being so stiff. So now I can, they loose as a goose, they can go into a bun, they can do whatever I want them to do because they're not as stiff. We've reached the end guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time.